Hello and welcome. In this video, we're going to take a look and see how we're able to create roles and control how our users are able to access our assets. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to head into the control panel. So open up the menu if it's not open already. From here, we'll head over to users followed by roles. We already see a number of roles that are here, but we're going to be creating a new role. Now, one of the big questions, of course, is which scope or which tab do we want to click? In this case, right, we always want to think about what is it that we exactly want to control. And from there, let that assessment guide us. In this example, we're going to head over to site roles. And then we're going to click on the add button over here on the right hand side. So for the title, we're going to type site content creator. You want to make sure that the type is site. If you want to add a description, feel free to do so. For the sake of simplicity, I'll go ahead and leave this alone. From here, let's go ahead and click Save. Now that we've created the role, we're going to go ahead and define the permissions that will be inside of this role. Now that we're inside the defined permissions, we'll click on the drop down for Site Administration. Right, since we want to be able so since the scope or the context of this role is to be able to create web content, we want to navigate over to the content and data section, followed by web content. Now, a common question that comes up as we're looking through this list of checkboxes is, is there documentation for what these things do? Um, the answer is there isn't formal documentation that at least I know of as we're making this video. So as we look through this, this is supposed to be self-documenting. Uh, we know that sometimes that is not always the case or sometimes that there might be questions along the way. So what I personally like to do is as I'm going through this process, once I create the role, I will assign the role to a user, any user, and then impersonate that user. From there, I'll check one of these boxes, save, go to my impersonated user with the role, and see what changed. I go through that back and forth process until the desired outcome is achieved. That way it gives me a better idea of what it is that I'm doing as I check these boxes. So that's one of my tips. It's not in the instructions, but something to keep in mind. So the general permissions is a general outline of do we have permissions to be able to access, in this case, the web content section right here. So these are what these series of check boxes allows us to do. What sort of actions can we perform on this web content section right here? So for this situation, as a site content creator, I want to be able to access the web content section in the site administration. Typically, we like to be explicit. Sometimes Liferay will assume some permissions for us. So for example, in order to access in the site administration, we probably need to view it. Sometimes Liferay gives us the permissions, sometimes it doesn't. So better to be explicit in this situation. So now that we're able to access the web content section, now that we're inside of the web content section, the resource permissions basically define what can we do with these specific things, in this case, web content, web content folders, and so on. So in the web content section, I want to be able to add a folder and I also want to be able to see what is inside of this web content section. Our next set of permissions are in regards to web content folders. So from here, I want to be able to add a subfolder, add web content, update, as well as view. As we scroll down, the next resource that we're looking at is the web content articles. So what am I able to do with web content articles? I'll want to be able to update as well as view them. We'll then scroll down to the bottom and then save. We'll expand out the site administration section one more time and add a couple more permissions. We'll head over to content and data followed by blogs. From the blog section, again, general permissions is regarding am I able to access in this case, blogs within the site, uh, the site administration menu. So I want to be able to do that 
as well as be able to view it. Once I'm inside of the blog section, what sort of things am I able to do with the specific resources or the things inside of the blogs section? So regarding blog entries, I want to be able to add an entry. With the blog entries, I'll also want to be able to add a discussion, delete discussions, update, update discussions, as well as view. And then at the bottom, we'll go ahead and click save. Let's keep on going here. A few more permissions to add. So we'll also want to be able to do things within the documents in media. So let's head over to content data, followed by documents and media. We'll want to be able to access Insight Administration as well as view. So access the documents in media from the site admin. Let's go ahead and scroll down a little bit. For the documents themselves, we want to be able to add a folder as well as view the documents that are here. Just like what we did for the web content section, we want our site content creators to be organized. So rather than creating documents at the root level, Right, we want them to be able to create a folder and then store those documents there. As we scroll down, the next resource we're looking at are document folders. So we want our user to be able to add documents to a document folder, as well as create a subfolder, update what's in the folder, as well as view what's inside of the folders. Scrolling down, looking at individual documents, we'll want to be able to update individual documents as well as view them. And then we'll scroll all the way to the bottom and then click save. So now that we've created our role, we're going to go ahead and assign a role to a user. So we're going to be creating this user over in the users and organization section. So we're going to head over to the control panel, users, followed by users and organizations. Let's click on the plus button over here on the right hand side to create our new user. So the name of the user is going to be Omar Miles. So his screen name is going to be Omar.Miles. His email will be Omar.Miles at Livingston.com. Right, feel free to fill out the rest if you want. Feel free to fill out all of the miscellaneous details. We have to give him a first name as well as a last name. Let's go ahead and scroll towards the bottom and then click save. Now that we've created Omar, we're going to head over to membership on the left hand side. And we want Omar to be the content creator of the Livingston life site. So for sites, let's click select and let's make him a member of the Livingston Life. Let's go ahead and click the Save button. Next, we'll head over to Roles. And then under Site Roles, we'll click Select. And we're going to be selecting the Site Content Creator. From here, let's go ahead and click Save. Very good. Next thing we're going to do is test everything out. So let's go ahead and set a password for Omar, I always like to set the password as test followed by the number one. That way, when we are required to reset the password, I can just set it to test. From here, let's go ahead and click save. And now that we've saved the file, last thing we need to do is log in as Omar. So what I'll do is I'll go incognito or private browser, depending on which browser you're using. And I'll head over to localhost 8080. I'll sign in and we'll sign in as Omar Miles at Livingston, Livingston.com. And then the password that I set is test followed by the number one. So whatever it is that you set, go ahead and type that in. All right, so change the password. I'll change it to test in this case. My father's middle name, and I always like to say it is test, there we go. So from here, we're gonna click on the user icon up at the top right, and then select My Sites. We'll head over to the My Sites tab, and then head over to the Livingston Life. We'll wait a few moments. 
Now that I'm here in the Livingston Life, you'll notice that we have the menu button on the left-hand side, the content and data section, and then those three sections that we gave permissions for. From there, feel free to navigate around and see uh, that we do have access to everything that we need. Continuing on though, we're gonna be creating a new blog over here in the Livingston Life site. So once we open the menu, let's head over to blogs. And then from the blogs, let's click on the blue plus button to add a blog entry. So for the title, we're gonna call this I Dream of Fiji. For the subtitle, we're going to type reflections on my time in the islands of the South Pacific. And then for the content, we're gonna head over to our exercises and pull from the uh, Fiji tab or the Fiji text. So let me navigate over there. Fiji text, Fiji does sound like a great place to be. All right, so we have the text. And then the last thing we wanna do is add an image up here at the top. So we can head back over to our exercises and take the Fiji JPEG and then just drop it up here at the top like so. Once you've accomplished all of that, you can go ahead and scroll down to the bottom and then click publish. Very good. So we've seen how to create a role within LifeRay as well as assign this role to a user and see the effects of the permissions that we have signed to the role. So that wraps it up for this video, and I will see you in the next video.